Hey what's up everyone, in this Adobe Photoshop video I'm going to make use of the new sky replacement tool. So instead of manually replacing the sky with luminosity masks, I'm going to try to create a realistic looking landscape scene with the new tool that Adobe just has added. Obviously sky replacement isn't a thing for everyone, but I personally don't mind using it as long as I can create a better looking photo with it. So without much more talking, let's start with the process. Here I have my landscape photo which I want to work on. As you can see in the sky is rather boring. Also I shot this during daytime, especially for the reason that I had the sky replacement in mind. You might already guess this is a rather easy and not so complex sky to replace since we have a lot of hard edges right here. The only thing that could be a problem for this AI sky replacement is maybe this little tree in the back with lots of detail. So let's just give it a try, right? For the sky replacement, I'm going to edit and then just hit sky replacement. And as you can see, Photoshop will do all the magic for you right here. I'm using my own sky, which I shot a few years ago. So if you want to use your own sky as well, just hit that little plus icon right here. And then let's load this one. Okay. And here we have the new sky. Oh, you can already see there is a subtle halo around this tree, especially. That doesn't look that good actually. So let's try to play around with those sliders a little bit. Could make the edge of this mask a little harder by reducing the fade edge. I think that helps a bit. Also, we can adjust the lightning situation. That means if I turn up the slider, the foreground will get a little darker. Also, let's adjust the colors a little bit so the foreground does look a little warmer. We can even flip the new sky, but I'm not sure if I want to. So let's keep it like this. And now let's hit OK. You can see Photoshop has place all those adjustments in a new group. That means we can do some further manual adjustments to those layers. And since I want to remove this halo around the tree, I'm going to make use of the sky layer right here. So if I alt click on the layer mask, you can see this part of the sky isn't actually pure white, but it should be pure white. So let's see what we can do here. I can use the brush tool set the foreground color to white and use the brush mode of overlay and maybe let's reduce the opacity of the brush and then let's just paint over this spot right here and by using the overlay blending mode for the brush i'm only changing the brighter pixels that means if i would paint over black with a white brush there isn't anything changing so that's exactly what we need right here but let's see, maybe I turn the opacity down a little more. That's basically almost the same workflow as if I would change the sky manually with luminosity masks. But still, I think the sky replacement is doing a really, really good job at masking the foreground here. Okay, that looks pretty decent. The halo is gone now. Also, let's check the tree in the back. And you can see the sky replacement even left in the chromatic aberration. I think that's pretty fascinating. So in general, I'm a really big fan of this new feature. It just saves a ton of time and is super easy to use. But let's adjust this image a little further. You can see the layer mask isn't locked with the sky. That means I can drag around the sky without dragging the layer mask with it. So let's place the sky a little differently. Also, I want to do some further adjustments to the foreground. You can see Photoshop has created this curves adjustment layer and it seems it just has dropped the green highlights here, which makes the foreground a little more red-ish. Uh, I, I could drop it a little more, I think. Okay. But let's do some more adjustments just to this foreground layer right here. For this, let's apply another curves adjustment layer. And let's just drop the overall brightness a little bit. 
I'm doing this since the foreground just has to be a little darker in this case. Uh, maybe we can mask out the tree a little bit. So get some more brightness in here. Okay, I want to apply another curves adjustment layer and again drop the brightness some more. But this time I'm inverting the layer mask by hitting Ctrl I, which just fills it with black of course. And now I'm using a white brush to paint back in some of this more darker foreground. And next I want to blend the sky with the foreground a little more. And for this I want to apply some glow effect. Again, this is a very heavy effect. I just like to add those to the images since I think it makes the photos look better most of the times. So let's create a new layer and this time go with the hard line blending mode. Grab the brush tool and let's drop the opacity of the brush to around 9% to not make it too heavy. Let's zoom in a little bit. By the way, here you can also see the masking that Photoshop did was pretty accurate. Like, look at those edges, that's pretty impressive. But let's add the glow effect. I'm picking up a color from this bright area right here and let's maybe make it a little brighter. And then I just carefully paint in there a few times. I can even make use of this little hole in the tree. I just increase the brush size a little further each time I paint in to make the glow a little more realistic. Okay, that looks pretty cool, I think. Then at this point, I think I could also make use of the Nick collection as well. So let's merge all those layers and check the Nick collection plugin for some final editing. First, I want to go with the polarization effect right here, since this will just make the colors look much, much better. Okay, then let's apply another Nick collection effect. And this time I'm aiming for the dreamy look using the classical soft focus filter. And here I'm using the first diffusion method. Okay. Then let's mask out the foreground from this soft focus layer. So I'm creating a layer mask. Again, use the brush tool and set the foreground color to black. And then just paint over the foreground a little bit. Okay, nice. And that's actually it for replacing the sky and blending foreground and sky together using a bunch of different filters. My opinion on this new sky replacement tool. It is very impressive at masking out the landscape in the foreground. I think it's also good that it comes with its own sky library and also that you can just add your own skies very easily. And in general, it's just a huge time saving compared to doing the same thing with luminosity masks, which I personally just don't find that fun to do. I much rather spend the time adding other effects to the image. Also, the adjustments in the sky replacement panel are easy to understand and applying all those settings is non-destructive, which is very, very good. The downside is it's obviously not perfect and I had to do some manual adjustments but since the whole process is, as I just said, non-destructive, you can just play around with all those adjustment layers and the layer masks, so you can get a pretty realistic result. Again, I know this is heavy, heavy post-processing and photo manipulation, but for me it's okay to replace guys or add objects to an image, since after all, photography is just another art form and you can pretty much do whatever you want, so let the people just have fun with it. And I hope this video was interesting for you. Of course, if you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you very much for watching this video.